The following are the supplementary Dusk Bowl tapes. For the main story, check the description, or make sure to watch the videos to start with Season 1, Episode 1, Season 1, Episode 2, etc. Now please, enjoy. There's something about abandoned places, isn't there? Ghost towns, empty factories... They all trigger something in our brain. Something that asks, what was this? Who lived here? And why was it left to rot? I love forgotten places. I love how they make you lower your voice, like you would in a library. As if you're making an effort not to disturb some unseen thing. You feel like if you're quiet enough... You'll just make out the whisper of its past. But what's the point of my tangent? Well, to be brief, I found a place. Tucked away in a cold little spot, there's a town called Dusk Bowl. And while it's by no means abandoned, it is a brutally quiet place. People make an effort not to speak to each other as they sheepishly go about their day here. But whilst you'll rarely see them talk to anyone outside of people they already know, it seems as though the entire town has silently agreed to avoid the old radio station on Burton Street. People cross the road just so they don't have to walk past the dilapidated building. And as the long dead neon sign says, this place was known as Dusk Bowl FM. Inside the station's archive room, I found piles and piles of tapes. These, combined with the old newspapers I found, reveal only one thing. On September 22, 2004, just after 9 a.m., 101.7 Dusk Bowl FM went off the air. The station staff, along with any trace of them, had vanished. To this day, all of them are presumed dead. The following tapes are recordings of the station's final broadcasts. Good morrow, madams and misters, brothers and sisters. It's currently 9am, it's the 12th of September. My name's Marshall, and you're listening to the home of good music. Dusk Bowl FM. A bit of a story behind the track I opened with today. The song was Dream by Junk Mail. But Marshall, I hear you ask, what is this story you speak of? Well, Junk Mail is one of my all-time favourite bands. I absolutely adore them, but they broke up in the early 90s. So, as far as I am aware, the album that I'm holding in my hand is the only surviving copy of their debut. So who knows, maybe at some point I'll play them again here on Dusk Bowl FM. I want to start things off today by wishing you all a happy Kingshot Day. I better see you all down at Everson's tonight for some of Richard's one-of-a-kind Floater Cocktails. But we want to know how you're spending your Kingshot Day. So give us a call on 006. For you older listeners out there, you probably all already know the story behind Kingshot Day. But for you youngins, right after this ad break, we're going to be telling you the story of the Lady of the Lake. Don't walk the streets at night looking for somewhere to hire a movie. Hire the movie you want, when you want it. Video City at Newtown in Hobart and Bathurst Street in Launceston. Open to midnight seven days a week so you can really enjoy the good time. And we're back. That was Watershed by the Phosphenes. 
Have you ever wondered where the flower board came from? Well, how about I tell you the story? This may surprise you, but in the late 1800s, Duskball was actually a rapidly growing town. Hell, the amount of people we had moving here, we were on our way to being reclassified as a city. But that would all change one fateful summer. At this point in time, the Neverwood was known as Pierce Forest, and was considered to be a beautiful attachment to Lake Kingshot, which too was known for its scenic beauty. The lake could be enjoyed on one of its multiple running and walking tracks, and tourists would always go there. Lake Kingshot and the adjoining Pierce Forest was a tourist hotspot in Dusk Bowl. But this age of town prosperity wasn't to last. That summer, 47 men, women, and children vanished in the Pierce Forest area. This mass disappearance made national headlines, and, well, word travels fast. And the word on Dusk Bowl was that it wasn't safe. Town police were at a loss. They had scoured Pierce Forest, they had interviewed all the townsfolk, and hell, they had even requested assistance from the state police. But in the end, they just started flippantly dismissing any and all missing persons cases as cold cases. They didn't have the time, resources, or manpower to figure out what had happened, and really, they had nothing to go on anyway. But Dusk Bowl didn't give up. Even in this time of heartache the community came together and proposed that it would be easy for them to find the missing people if the general public had a constant, easy-to-access frame of reference of what they looked like. So in the heart of what would now be known as Dusk Bowl CBD, a notice board was repurposed. It was decided that all missing person posters would be put up on this board for all the world to see. And for a while... It really gave the community hope. Grieving parents and heartbroken lovers really felt as though their lost loved ones were just within their reach. But on a hot summer morning, while the air was thick and the sun was searing, Dusk Bowl police found the bodies of 47 people floating in Lake Kingshot. It took more than six hours to fish out all the corpses. It's said that many of the small town police were seen vomiting and crying as they did so. And that was the end of Dusk Bowl's golden age. After the atrocity, tourism just died. People stopped moving here and hundreds of residents just upped and left. To make matters worse, our mortality rate has only been climbing since. But what of the culprit? Who butchered these people and left their bodies to be found? Whispers began to spread of a woman with twisted limbs and knotted hair skulking around Pierce Forest. People reported sightings of ladylike footprints trodden into the muddy shores of Lake Kingshot. Footprints that were always seen leading into the lake, but never out again. After this, townsfolk swore off Pierce Forest for fear of falling victim to the mad woman whose mind was as deranged and twisted as the trees themselves. She would come to be known as the Lady of the Lake. And while she's long dead, we were all still brought up with those stories of the Lady of the Lake hiding in our cupboards and the Lady of the Lake, that mad, grinning, knife-wielding psycho creeping under our beds. As you can imagine, after this, hope in the townsfolk was all but snuffed out. That missing posters board in town became covered in tear-scrawled notes, photographs, and flowers. It turned from a beacon of hope into a town memorial. And that was the birth of the flower board. Today, we use Kingshot Day as a way to celebrate and appreciate the fact that we're not on the flower board. Today is used as a way to indulge in the joys of being alive. And we've got people lining up to call our fabulous station. Remember, if you want to get in touch with us, just ring and tell us about your Kingshot Day. And we've got Carol on the line. Carol, so good to hear from you. Tell me, 
How's your king shot day going? What have you got planned? Hey, Marshall. Look, it's not great. I'm picking up the kids from my sisters later, but after that I'm probably just going home. Come on, Carol. King Shot Day is a day where we should all come together. Why not take the kids out to the park or grab dinner at Everson's? Yeah, look, I didn't call to get pastime advice from you, Marshall. I called because I'm disgusted with the kind of show you're running here. <laughs> well, Carol, I'm sorry you feel that way, but I... I never said I was finished. You're always running your mouth, so let someone else talk for once. You act like some condescending kindergarten teacher. The way you're always being so cheery and carefree is disgusting. Especially when you're the one reading out the flower board every goddamn day. The same flower board my sister and daughter have to walk past on a daily basis. It's a directive that all media outlets in Duskwell have to read out the flower board. I don't like it either, but- God damn it, let me finish. Do you know why I have to leave my kids with my sister? Do you? Her little girl was one of those poor kids that went missing in the Neverwood. And I'm trying so hard to keep her positive. I'm scared to leave her alone. Just a few days ago those children went missing, and you're out here trying to convince everyone to subscribe to your particular brand of happiness? Shame on you. Shame on you, you grubby little man. Um, I'm just trying to help. Fuck off. The Componist shall zoo. And we can have one last call today, and it's Michael from the Dusk Bowl Search and Rescue Service. Michael, so good to hear from you. I'm sure that I speak for everyone when I say that we're keen to know how the search is going. Just know that you have Dusk Bowl FM and the rest of our town at your back. Actually, I can't comment on the search. I just wanted to ring to say that I'm going to Everson's tonight with my buddies. And that's great to hear, Michael, but I'm sure I speak for everyone when I say that we're all really keen to hear what's going on. Uh, well, uh, we've actually called off the search for now. What? Yeah, <clears throat> we uh, couldn't find anything. Our guys did their best, but we don't have anything yet. It hasn't even been a month. Yeah, well, uh, I'm at least looking forward to having some floater cocktails tonight, and I'm planning on a really good game of co Goodbye, Michael. Ash! What the hell was that? I don't know. I'm sorry. The 10 second delay wouldn't work and I- What do you mean the 10 second delay wouldn't work? It's just a button! I'm sorry. I kept pressing it but nothing happened. I tried to stop it, but it wasn't working. I just got torn apart on air by a caller, and you know what else? She was making me out to be the bad guy. I'm sorry, Marshall. I tried to fix it, but... And that fucking Michael guy! Those kids haven't even gone a month. And he's what? Already throwing in the towel so we can get his piss on with his mates? Fuck, I need some air! But what about... I said I need some air! Uh, sorry about that, everyone. My name is Ash, and I'll be taking over for today, I guess. Uh, time to read the flower board? <sighs> Madams and misters, I'd like to, um, I'd like to apologize for the way that I acted earlier today. It was unprofessional and rude and, God, I feel like a right douche canoe. Ash, if you can hear me back there, I'm, I'm really sorry. I know it's been a stressful, hard time for all of us at the moment. I mean, those kids and that goddamn... It's fine. It, it's fine. Like so many of you, I am furious with Dusk Bowl Search and Rescue. They have demonstrated complete disregard for the lives of those children. I applaud all of you that have taken it upon yourselves to go looking for them. Normally I'd say don't go within spitting distance of the Neverwood, but these are our town's children. But for right now, I'll leave you with one last track. Willow Song by Madison Dabs Petty. My name's Marshall. You've been listening to Dusk Bowl FM and Arrivederci. Good morrow, madams and misters, brothers and sisters. It's currently Monday, the 13th of September at 9am. My name is Marshall and you're listening to the home of good music, Dusk Bowl FM. I have some fan...
fantastic news for you this morning, madams and misters. We have an almost generational big bad in this town. You know, once it was the Lady of the Lake, then it was Carolyn Noon, and for us millennials, it's been Bradley Richard. Well, folks, it makes me happy to finally be able to report some good news. This morning at 6am, Bradley Pritchard had his smug, satisfied little head strapped into the electric chair, where it was positively fried. People of Dusk Bowl, we now have one less boogeyman to be worried about. We no longer need to be concerned that he's going to creep into our homes at night, wrap bailing twine around our necks and strap us to one of his demented, grotesque body stacks. But as much as I'd love to tear this guy apart for an hour, we've got a show to do. And we'll get right back to it after this. But I'm only after Tooth and Reconciliation. My goal is to finish the campaign on Legendary before Halo 2 comes out. You seriously think it's going to take you, of all people, over a month to finish the campaign? What are you going to do if you finish it early? Well then, I'll just keep replaying the campaign until Halo 2 comes out. <laughs> yeah, right. Alternatively, we could have a system link match again. What do you say? You, me, Blood Gulch, 1v1, let's go. Last time we did that, you camped in the Scorpion. Oh, what can I say? I'm just a tactical genius. <laughs> More like a pussy by the sounds of it. Ooh, them's be fattin' words. Actually, I was wondering if you wanted to go to the movies with me. There's this new Resident Evil movie coming out, and I... And next up, we have Kate, who wants to talk about her daughter, Jamie. Yeah, yes, that's correct. Kate, why is it that you want to talk about Jamie this morning? Well, my little girl was one of the kids that went missing, and I'd just like to talk about her so that people know the kind of person she was, and to please keep searching for her. Sorry, I couldn't help but notice. You said was? Sorry, uh, I meant is. <laughs> Simple mistake, I understand. Please, tell us about Jamie. Well, JJ was always such a sweet little girl. She performed well at school. She had lots of friends. Uh, oh, and she adored cats. She was always clever, my JJ. I don't know why she went on that stupid hunt with her friends. I'm sorry, hunt? We've all been under the impression that it was a camping trip. What's this hunt? Oh, it was stupid. She came home one day talking about I people. It was probably something stupid one of her friends told her. I... People. What did she say about these eye people? She drew a picture of one if you'd like it. But yeah, she said that there were these things all over town. So she and her friends had decided to go into the Neverwood. <laughs> Sorry, I'm at a loss. Why did she go into the Neverwood? To try and get what she called their boss. This thing she called the Composer. <laughs> Good morrow. Uh, what's up? Hi, my name is Ash, and you're listening to Dusk Bowl FM, the station for cool cats and pub rats. Uh, that came out wrong. Sorry. Um, God, this is going worse than the Phantom Menace. Um, that was. <laughs> So, you guys and gals have already probably figured out that I'm not Marshall. You're not Marshall? What? <laughs> um, <clears throat> well, Marshall's gone to help find those missing kids, so I'm in charge instead. And he didn't tell me what to do before he left, so... I'm just gonna wing it and hope I don't get us taken off the air. I guess we should start with the flower board. Ooh, yeesh. Uh, how about we skip the flower board for today? 
After all, it's just some guy died, some kid went missing, etc. No one wants to hear that. I mean, come on, is it really that important to be reminded of how- Captain Slug, 190904. This strange planet is looming and terrifying, and I. I. Ah, uh, shit. Being completely honest, I don't spend a fucking second in here. Jesus Christ. God, it's cold in here. I mean. Really, really freaking cold. <laughs> and I passed the search and rescue line a while ago. You know, it was barely 800 meters in. It's like they weren't even trying. But, well, I guess that's why I'm here. Let's see if I can hopefully find those kids or at least help some way. And maybe the rest of the town will start seeing me as someone who helps and not someone that just makes things worse. Here. This place is like our town's black hole, and I fucking voluntarily walked in. You know, when I get back to the studio, I'm gonna cut you, Mr. Recording, so we only have the glamorous sections of this story, but for now, you're gonna act as my uh, journal. I sort of go freaking nuts in here. Xbox or PS2? Um, I'm not, I'm not sure what you're asking me. Okay, never mind. Before the break, that last song was... <laughs> ...having questions from Ash on Duskable FM this morning. You ring up and I ask you random questions. Just please stop asking me questions like, What the hell are you doing? Where is Marshall? And why won't my cat eat his breakfast? They're rude questions, and I don't really know how to answer them, okay? We're also getting a lot of angry callers regarding the flower board reading. Again, I'm really sorry about what I said. I'm not from Dusk Bowl, so I just didn't get how important it was. I didn't mean to upset you guys. Please stop yelling at me. You've been listening to the home of good music, Dusk Bowl FM. I hope you guys had fun today. It was... interesting. And I...